Upon returning from a road trip inspired by the book, Wisconsin Death Trip, Marty and I decide to head south to explore a Wisconsin city so full of history it'll transport you into the past. Located 39 miles northwest of Milwaukee, this city originated in the 1840s, though evidence suggests the area was in use for far longer by the peoples indigenous to North America. Charming and delightful, this historic city has all the vibes and feels of a small town. Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sally here and... Marty. Today we're checking out... West Bend, Wisconsin. And the reason we're checking out West Bend is that they are redoing their downtown area. It's a historic downtown. And because of that, it's the perfect opportunity to be able to walk around without a lot of traffic or people. Let's go check out the sites. Now I know West Bend is a bit larger than what we normally film. West Bend is a city of roughly 32,000 people. But this main street is like small town USA. And it's currently under construction. When it's all said and done, it's really going to be amazing. This is going to be one of those places where everybody's going to want to come down and hang out. There's a lot of neat shops and boutiques. A lot of cool places to eat, grab a bite, get a drink. You know, all the important things to do in life when you're not slaving away for the man. As you can see, Marty's already scoping out something unusual and unique to the downtown here. Let's go find out what it is. It's got the original iron extension arms on it. Boy, are them old. So when's the last time you've seen a building with a cloth awning that was original with all the original hardware. That's probably original cloth on it by looking at the end of the wood on there. There's no doubt in my mind that that's got to be old. And speaking of unique shops and boutiques tucked in between the Norbert and Sweet Laurel, you have this little tiny shop called the Starbeam Eclectic. Essentially, it's a vibrational wellness and lifestyle studio. It appears to be appointment based and you can get acupuncture and Reiki done on you as well as hook yourself up with some crystals. Now, what does that have to do with West Bend's early history? It doesn't, at least not directly. Indirectly, it's just another example of how West Bend you know, originally started out as a stopping off point between halfway between Milwaukee and Fond du Lac. And one of the things about West Bend that people probably don't realize is that the industry or commerce that was prevalent back then and still is today is that they were known for a lot of like specialty manufacturing, specialty type shops in their downtown. And so I thought because that is one of them shops that's unique that you don't necessarily find in other places. Well, okay, you probably do in the bigger cities. It's not something though that you find in smaller towns per se. So I just showed that as an example to segue into talking about West Bend's early history. And speaking of history, we're stopping here in front of what used to be the first state bank that was built, oh, probably about 1927, based on the date that you can see up there. And I know Marty's got something to say about it, so let's go over there and find out what's on his mind. Okay, Marty, what's up? I'm just looking at, this was built, obviously, it probably had electricity when this was built in this building. You see the round circles up on each end of the building. I'd be willing to bet that those were alarms. And how would I know that? Because just below them, you can see where they mounted the flags to the buildings on each side. And on the front facade going in, those ain't the original lights, but you can see where the original lights were. So those weren't lights up there, I'm pretty sure. That a four mounting holes and then the, the single alone hole for the, for the alarm wire to come through. I bet you those are alarms. Unfortunately, they're not there anymore. You can tell by looking at this old photo, looking down Main Street, that things have changed considerably from back then to today. Today, you have places like Baird, 
Private Wealth Management, West Bend's Copper River Bar and Grill, and the Murphy and Prochthauser SC building. But one thing that hasn't changed is that they have the old West Bend Theater marquee still up. Originally meant for vaudeville acts, the Bend, as it was known, quickly became one of the premier movie palaces in the area. Built in 1929 by Chicago architects Graven and Mager, the theater was known for having near-perfect sound. With a seating capacity of 825, many locals enjoyed watching Hollywood's moving pictures on the big screen. Now recently renovated, after having been closed for some time, the West Bend Theater builds itself as a modern experience in a historic venue. I just love it when they restore the old buildings back to their former glory. Moving on, next door to the West Bend Theater is Candyman on Main. Another historic building in West Bend, you can see it was built about 1894. Known as the Pilot and Echo Newspaper Building, it was built at the same time as the Wynand Hotel to the south. And though the brickwork's been painted over, you can see that there is a lot of ornate detailing that went into constructing it. And then on the other side of the West Bend Theater is this longtime local favorite, Hussar's House of Fine Diamonds. A family-owned business, Hussar's has been serving up fine diamonds for more than 65 years. Okay. Maybe they're not that old, but they're still older than me. Well, Marty, I know, has discovered a place that's rather interesting. Let's catch up to him and find out what he found here in the downtown of West Bend. So how many people recognize this slogan? Say it with me, the exclusive company. I do. I remember going there as, well, a teenager back in my early college days since a lot of us love old records and music we're gonna go on in and check it out now an independent record store called the beat goes on records and more this place was once the home of a well-known Wisconsin icon the exclusive company billed as America's oldest full-line independent record store the exclusive company got its start in West Bend on April 6, 1956. Founded by James, Mr. G, Jim Betty, the store was known for its large alphabetized bins of 33 RPM records, the smell of patchouli, and its random collectibles. A local favorite, the exclusive company quickly grew in popularity and expanded to other locations, including Green Bay and Oshkosh. Well, that was fun. That was a big old blast from the past. A reminder of my youth. For our next stop, we're heading to one of Marty's favorite style buildings. In front of me is the Flatiron of West Bend. Commonly known as the Haymauer Building, this used to be where you would go for all your wallpaper and painting needs. Now the location of Urban Farm Girl. Inside, you'll find a cute shop selling home decor, gifts, and clothing, all in a modern farmhouse theme. Over on the very north end of North Main Street, you can see there is another flat iron building. And apparently, back when Highway 45 used to run through this area, this section here was actually the cellar. Uh, that's right, what is now street level used to be underground. Can you believe that? According to what I was told, when they moved 45, they dug this all out. And this here, which was once underground, became street level. Allegedly. You know Marty, he never takes anything at face value. Anyways, moving on, this is the view looking south on North Main Street. Now, I had gone over to the Historical Society to do some research. I wasn't able to get as much information on individual buildings, 
mainly because there is just so much historical information. I would have to spend weeks weeding through their records. But I was able to find out just some general historic information about West Bend, starting with the early settlers. Many of them were Yankees, as they were referred to. They were American-born citizens who traveled from the East. They had come out here to grow wheat because apparently the land around here was conducive to growing bumper crops of wheat. At least in the beginning, after a few short years, they found that they weren't getting the yields that they wanted. Therefore, many of them pulled up stakes and moved farther west to grow more wheat. The people that they sold their land to? German immigrants. Many German immigrants started coming out to the West Bend area. Oh, it was probably by then, the late 1840s, that they saw a change from the Yankees to the German immigrants. They came here, of course, to start a new life, to hopefully have a better life than the one they had in Germany. Because over in Germany, anybody that was doing any kind of farming was likely to not own the land that they were farming for these lords that owned the land. And really, they were living in basically poverty conditions. They came here hoping that they could maybe get a piece of the American dream. Thought I'd stop here for just a quick moment. Across the way are some historic buildings. We'll get to them in a minute. First, I want to point out Old Settlers Triangle. According to the placard that was put up by the Washington County Historical Society in 1973, on this triangular shaped piece of property used to stand a building in which the old settlers would come to conduct business, political, and social events. Hence, through a gift from the community trust, the triangle is dedicated to the early settlers and leader of the community. And then across the way are these historic buildings that sit here. You've got the one that houses the Emmaus Bible Church that I believe was built around the time of 1862. This very ornate and interesting looking building that now houses the Idle Hour. And the Washington House. Now on the National Register of Historic Places, it was built in 1864 to replace a wooden structure that had been built in 1852. And for much of its existence, it was used as a hotel and a theater. As you can see, we've come to the location of the Brazen Head Pub. It's an authentic Irish pub. And my reason for pointing it out is something I found interesting when perusing West Bend's history is that back on April 19th of 1856, a man by the name of George Irish applied for the very first liquor license here in West Bend for the cost of $10. <coughs> and ironically, his pub or tavern, if you will, had been open since 1849. Well, Marty, what do you think? I'm thinking we ought to go take an ice cream break considering how hot it is out here. I don't eat ice cream. What? Of all the days when it's like 90 plus degrees out here and he's telling me he quit ice cream? I think that's kind of bull pucky. I'm getting some ice cream. I don't care what he says. Say hello to West Bend, population 31,727. Named for the westward bend of the Milwaukee River, this city is known for preserving its history, culture, and green spaces. With two districts recognized by the National Register of Historic Places, including the downtown, West Bend is the perfect place to explore if you want to be transported into the past. As luck would have it, our plans for getting ice cream kind of went by the wayside after being out in the heat all day. When we got back to where we were staying, I just was like, eh, 
didn't really feel like going anywhere. Marty ended up going and getting us some ice cream from the grocery store, which not very exciting for you all. And today isn't really forecasted to be much better in terms of heat. We'll see how long I manage to stay out here. This might be one of them videos filmed in multiple segments. Anyways, the reason I brought you out here so early this morning was because I wanted to get out here and show you the river. I know, exciting stuff. Bear with me, there is a reason that we're looking at this glorious looking river. And that is back in the day, you know, before air conditioning was the norm. There were only a few places where people could go to cool off. One of them being the theater. And here in West Bend, it so happened that the theater was built on this very riverbank where they were able to utilize the cooling powers of the water to keep the inside of the theater cool. According to what I read in the historical archives, they were able to keep that theater a cool 70 degrees, which on a day like today where it's already over 80, at 9, 10 in the morning, that would be a welcome comfort. And I imagine a lot of people visited the theater back in the day. Going to the theater wasn't the only way to stay cool. On hot summer days, people of West Bend often visited the local swimming hole, just like they do now. Before we move on, I also wanna point out that along with the improvements to Main Street, They've been working on improvements here along the river. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, I think when it's all said and done, it's gonna be a really great thing for West Bend. Since there's so much here in West Bend with a city this large, uh, we're gonna move on out of the downtown area into some of the outer lying areas. There's just some things I wanna show you and I'm thinking that if we continue to hang out in the downtown area, we may not get to them. There's Barton, which is essentially its own little forgotten town within the city of West Bend. There's also some Native American burial grounds, a cemetery, oh, and a jail. That would be cool to see as well. But before we go any further, I have a couple of quick shout outs to give. Special thanks goes out to John E. and Anthony R. for becoming our latest patrons here on Patreon. Yay! And then special thanks goes out to Sue from Villa Park, Illinois, Benita from Lincolnshire, Illinois, and Jennifer from Lake Placid, Florida. And last but not least, special thanks goes out to Christopher from Fargo, North Dakota, in memory of his sweet Pippin for all tipping our trip jar. Thanks to all of you, we're able to get out and explore these awesome places, both here in Wisconsin and across America. I'm up over on South Fifth Avenue, facing north in the distance, you can see where Fifth Avenue connects with Main Street. And then over to my left, or if I'm facing north, it would be to my right, is this interesting building. Now home to Blondie Pop, which is some sort of pub that serves pizza and appetizers. The building reminds me an awful lot like a Masonic temple or some kind of Greek revival type architecture. I don't know what you call it. It's a cool looking building. Thought I'd share it with you, even though I don't know what used to be there. It's just one of many interesting pieces of architecture that you'll find here in West Bend. Built in 1921, this building originally served as a church for Christian scientists. And then going farther south, Along Fifth Avenue, we can see some of the old houses that grace the street. I just love looking at all the old houses. I wish I lived in one. I could see myself living in like one of these two-story, oh, maybe like something like this. Not exactly a two-story, 
more like a three-story with the attic, but this is just really cool. There's a huge front porch where you could sit out on your rocking chair watching all the action on the street. I can just picture it, 30 years from now, me, little old lady sitting on my rocking chair watching everybody go up and down the street, keeping an eye on my neighborhood. And then if that house doesn't trip your trigger, then you always have the Cream City brick right up ahead. Built in 1858, this is one of the oldest buildings standing in West Bend. It was built by James Neeland. He was one of the founding fathers of West Bend. Over the years, it was used as an inn, a home. It was even an abstract and title company for a time and a tea room, among other things. Before I forget, I want to point out something that I thought was really neat being done here in West Bend. If you look up at the lampposts in this area, you'll see flags that were created in memory of some of the individuals from West Bend who had served in the armed forces and were killed in action. This one here is in memory of Sergeant Henry F. Hank Gum, who was killed in action on February 4th, 1945. And then across the street from the James Neeland house over here on the right, you'll see in the background the Washington County Historical Society, which is the old courthouse. Built in 1889, the former courthouse was an upgrade to its predecessor, a wood frame structure erected back in 1854. On the National Register of Historic Places, the old Washington County Courthouse is made of cream city brick, has an eight-story tower, and stands on a hill overlooking the heart of West Bend. Now the location of West Bend's historical archives and a museum, the last time court was held in session here would have been in the early 1960s. Talk about history. A lot of important decisions were made affecting people's freedoms in this building. Granted, most ordinary citizens didn't find themselves facing the judge here, but for those who did, I'm certain whatever decisions were made had an impact on their lives. From here, if you continue along Fifth Avenue walking south, you'll find yourself in front of the old jail. On the National Register of Historic Places, this is one of only a few examples left of a jail with living quarters for the sheriff. And currently, on Saturday mornings during the farmer's market, you can get yourself a free self-guided tour of the jail. Built in 1886, the jail was in use at this location up until 1962. Meant to be fire and escape proof, the jail served as a residence for the county sheriff and his family, along with those who found themselves on the wrong side of the law. Interestingly enough, according to practices of the time, it was the job of the sheriff's wife, albeit unpaid, to take care of any prisoners who found themselves taking up residence here. I think we'll have to come back for that because I have been wanting to see the inside of this jail for quite some time. And how can I possibly pass up the opportunity when it's free? These cells look pretty intense. I don't think you're gonna be breaking out of any of these, or at least none too easily. Look at that. That's pretty thick metal doors, almost gives a feeling of being in a submarine, except with bars. The cell is set up like it would have been back in the day. Look, that's where they kept the chamber pot. And you can see that they had a pipe running up on out. I'm guessing this helped with the fumes. Oh, and look over here. They have where the prisoners would have taken a bath. You even get a view of the great outdoors while you're doing it. There you go. You get to have a taste of what you're missing out on as you're bathing. Here we got the deluxe accommodations where you have 
an actual blanket for your bed, and a sink, and a real toilet. You know you're living the high life when you get moved into one of these. Over here we have pictures of some of the sheriffs who served here, going all the way back to 1861. And then you have parts of old stills that might have been confiscated during that time. And look, an old gambling machine. Where's Marty when you need him? He'd be drooling over that thing. As I'm walking along, I wanna share something with you that I learned while digging through the archives in West Bend. And that is related to why, or possibly one of the reasons why, Wisconsin has so many taverns and bars. By the way, over here on the corner, you'll see an example or one of many examples of Cream City brick that you'll find here in town. Anyways, getting back to the reason for all the taverns. So West Bend, as I think I had mentioned earlier, was a halfway stopping point between Milwaukee and Fond du Lac. And along the roads that they built, they built these plank roads. Oh, about every six miles or so, there would be a stopping point, which coincidentally would be a tavern of some sort. But these were no ordinary taverns. These were places where people traveling by foot because again, a lot of the immigrants coming over would have been poor. They would have used their life savings to get here and upon arrival would have had very little money to be able to afford themselves a team of horses or oxen. So wherever they went, they would have been walking until they had made enough money to maybe purchase a horse. And I don't know about you, but walking all that distance, you would need places along the way to stop, places where you could get something to eat, maybe even perhaps spend the night because, you know, as you're walking, you're traveling, you're walking 30 miles. You're not going to do that all in a day, much less do 100 miles, which meant these taverns were more like places like places to sleep and eat, get your news, get, you know, informed on conditions, uh, whatever was going on along with being a stopping point where you could consume your adult beverages, of course. This, by the way, is a two-story townhouse that overlooks their Main Street, the southern portion of Main Street. Wow, you can really hear the cicadas buzzing in the background today. Coming up on what is known as the Frisbee House here in West Bend, on the National Register of Historic Places, the Frisbee House was originally created for a man by the name of Leander Frisbee. He was a prominent politician, lawyer, and teacher that lived in West Bend. And in 1881, Frisbee became Wisconsin's Attorney General. Built of Cream City brick, this beautiful structure is now home to West Bend Area's Chamber of Commerce. Can you imagine what it looks like on the inside? Fortunately, for those of you locally who are curious, who have an interest, you can come out the second weekend in October because the doors will be open and you can come on in and explore. Looking at Riverside Brewery and Restaurant, I'm thinking to myself, did I finish the story about why there are so many bars and taverns in Wisconsin? And I'm thinking I got sidetracked by the Frisbee house and did it. So quickly, I just wanted to say that because along the way you needed stopping points and I guess along the plank roads, at least the one going between uh, Fond du Lac and Milwaukee where West Bend was a halfway stopping point, they had taverns or these tavern inns, these hybrid, restaurant, tavern, lodging, whatever you want to call them. They were laid out every six miles or so. Hence, Wisconsin's early drinking culture began out of a necessity versus a desire to drink. Although, you know, that might be debatable by some, 
is my story and that's what I'm sticking to. By the way, for those of you who enjoy outdoor activities like hiking, bicycling, walking your dog, skiing, snowshoeing, the Eisenbahn State Trail Washington County segment runs right through West Bend. If I'm not mistaken, this is the old train depot, the West Bend train depot. If it was always here, I don't know, but it is interesting to note that the trail runs along the old rail bed. We're now over at Lizard Mound State Park. Here you'll find more than 25 effigy mounds preserved, a record of the culture and history of the Native Americans who built them. This is an overview of what the mounds look like. The ones that are flattened off, like this one here, are ones that were destroyed, and then the ones that are rounded are the ones that still exist today. You can see that some of them have a lizard-type shape, which is how the park got its name. Established in 1950, Lizard Mound State Park is located a few miles outside West Bend, near a community known as Farmington. Once the site of over 60 effigy mounds, there are 28 now remaining. On the National Register of Historic Places, the site is believed to have been created by the late woodland people, a tribe of Native Americans once indigenous to the region. It seems that archaeologists don't know exactly why the late woodland people built these mounds. One theory is that they were built as part of a ceremonial ritual meant to unify the spiritual and physical worlds and bring them into balance and harmony. Regardless of the reason, they are here, they are per the ones that are left have been preserved, and we get to see them as they are today. Here's a quick view of one of the mounds you can see. It goes right over that way. From here, it's hard to tell the shape and there is no marker that explains what it is. But imagine if we went back and looked on the map, we could see. Here's another one of the mounds. What's nice is the park is dog friendly as long as you keep your dogs on a leash. Though you wanna make sure you and your pets stay on trail because there is poison ivy. And you can get in here for free. There is no a requirement for a state park pass and so people can come out here and experience the quiet of nature and see the remnants of Native American culture that still exists today. We're now over in the part of West Bend that used to be the old village of Barton. It's a really nice historic part of West Bend and it's right along the Milwaukee River. You can see what's left of the old mill that was here. It's been converted into office suites. A lot of cream city brick can be found here. You've got one house here and then another one over there. Look at the detail here. You've got all the brickwork laid in such a way it's very intricate provides a lot of detail around the tops of the windows. You'd have to be very skilled as a bricklayer to be able to do such a thing. On November 1st, 1961, the village of Barton merged with the city of West Bend. Prior to this date, Barton was its own separate community. Established in 1845 when Barton Salisbury built a sawmill along the banks of the Milwaukee River, Barton remained smaller than West Bend because most of its land was designated for agricultural use. It's really neat. It's like Barton, or the section of West Bend that used to be Barton, has its own historic main street with a lot of cool looking brick buildings. You can see this one was built back in 1915. Who would have thought? I never even knew this section of West Bend existed. And there's so much here, I could probably do a separate video on Barton, maybe in the future. With a city as large as West Bend, there are a number of cemeteries. This one in particular is Pilgrim Rest. 
And the reason I brought you out to this particular cemetery is that there is supposedly a grave here where the headstone reads the date of birth for the individual was dated in the 1700s. And while I don't know if we'll be able to find that particular grave, you can see from the ones in front of me here that these were some fairly old graves dating back to the 1800s. And these would have been from some of West Bend's earliest settlers. This one here is fairly old. The person, Catherine Vandenberg, was born in March of 1827 and died in May of 1890. These headstones here are also fairly old and based upon their appearance, I suspect the individuals were quite well to do and were likely influential members of the community. A few more before we move on. This one you can see, although quite weathered, that the individual passed away in September of 1851. This one here, James Glaudry, died in 1862 and his wife Martha died in 1865. As much as I would like to try and track down the grave that has the headstone where the date of birth is from the 1700s, I think we're gonna move on only because there's just so much more of West Bend to see. Though we weren't able to explore all the great places historic West Bend has to offer, one thing's certain, we will be back.